G'day everyone, Ali here. Well recently I saw a video from Kim Dello on how to stop perfectionism getting in the way of art. Now that is me. <laughs> um, I always procrastinate on what I want to do. And yes, my name is Ali and I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> So, and it does um, get me in the way of creating ideas and mixed media, even cards. Sometimes I really, really struggle. I'll link her um, video down below to Kim's video and um, it was really, really good. So she went through some exercises on how to loosen up which I thought was really, really good. But I also was on Pinterest the other day and I came across a pin from Cloth Paper Scissors, Creating Without Overthinking. Now I'll link that pin down below as well. It was really, really good. So it was all about getting messy and just doing it, stop thinking. Um, it had some prompts so I'm going to do those prompts today and hopefully it will help me just loosen up. I'd love to hear if you have problems you know loosening up when you're actually creating. Do you overthink like I do? So I'm going to um, get messy today. Now what I do have here is I do have some prompts out of my bucket. Now this bucket idea came from Kyra Pace from Simply Creative Kyra and I haven't pulled prompts out of that for ages so I thought I'm just going to do a little bit of a spin on this and create prompt cards. So I'm going to use my prompts here on these sticks and I'm going to put them on my card. So there'll be a set of prompt cards. So I'll actually have two different types of prompts that I can pull from. So one day I might want to pull from my take five bucket and another time I might want to use my prompt cards. Now I have seen this done by Cat Hand, so I think Cat Hand has a set of prompt cards that she uses for various types of creating. And I'll link Cat Hand's YouTube channel down below. Now I'm not the one that has come up with this, this idea is out there. I thought this would be just something else that I could really play in. So the prompts that I've pulled out is some of the prompts that I do want to put on my cards and they're going to be ATC size so two and a half by three and a half inches. Now the Pinterest pin um, did mention about getting a deck of cards. Now I don't have a deck of cards but what I do have is some cereal boxes here. Had these, pulled them out, I've cut them just the front and the backs off and just discarded all the rest. But cereal boxes these days here in Australia have a glossy finish. So what I've done is I actually sanded the gloss off just to, so it will stick or the gesso that I'm going to use will help stick to this. So I thought what I might do is do the front and the back with the prompts from the Pinterest pin. Now the prompts that they had was, so cover these with gesso first. Once they're dry, I will cut them to those ATC size. I'm gonna grab some acrylic paint and I might use a brayer um, this time and just randomly paint with the brayer all over my cards. What I'll do once they're all dry I'm going to put them in a messy pile. I am not going to put them in a stack because that's what I would do and I think that's the perfectionism coming through. So once all my cards are cut and in a messy pile, what I'll do is I'll get some stamps from my stash and I'll randomly stamp over all the cards. Once that's done, I'm gonna get some stencils which are sitting on my desk. So I've got a heap of stencils here. I'm gonna stencil randomly all over the cards. Okay, I'm going to add some splatter at the end and you know what, I think I'm going to put some doodling in as well. So because I'm not a doodler, because I always think 
what am I going to doodle? So I'm going to let the card tell me what I'm going to doodle on it. Okay, so uh, whether it be shapes or things that I see on the card. So I might doodle on some of the cards. So first of all, what I'll do is I'm just going to gesso this, dry it, and I'll cut them up and then I'll be right back. So I've cut all my cards up and gessoed the front and the back and these are ATC size so it's two and a half by three and a half inches. I have my colour wheel here and I'm just going to pick three colours. So I've picked a violet, I've got a red colour in bright red and I've got this green paint here that uh, I purchased at Kmart. So on the colour wheel I'm picking those three colours that should go together. Now, as I mentioned, I am going to brayer the paint on. So I'm just going to just randomly put the paint on each card. Now, at the moment today, it's really, really hot. So this paint will actually dry in no time. So now I've moved on to the red and I'm doing exactly the same. Just not thinking about it. I'm just brayering this red all over and I'll do exactly the same with the violet so I'm just not thinking about it I'm just really having a good play with all of these paints and just brayering the paint so where it lands is where it's going to be brayed now just quickly clean off because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same on the back of the cards but I'm going to pick three different colors so I pulled out my colour wheel again and this time I'm going to use a navy. I'm going to use violet again and I'm going to use yellow. Now I'm going to do exactly the same technique on the back of these cards with the brayer. So just applying each colour on the back and it is taking no time to dry believe me it's, I think it's 33 outside so I've got the air conditioning on and yes just having a good old play I am really enjoying today just getting messy and doing this and you know what I should be doing this more often I'd really love to hear your comments on how you overcome perfectionism because uh, it is, it's really something really hard to overcome and just do stuff without thinking about it. I think this is something that I really struggle with in everyday life as well. So, but it's really um, good to see how each layer of colour is going on and is changing the dynamics of the cards. I'm just really um, amazed actually of how, um, yeah, things, these cards are just changing. I didn't realize but the battery died in the camera so I had gone through and stamped some of these cards randomly on the front and the back so I'm just finishing off and just stamping some of the ones that I had missed just using memento ink for this and I've just gone to my stash and I've just pulled out randomly some uh, clear stamps to have a play with. So the next prompt that I'm going to use is use modelling paste. Now I've got this Montmartre modelling paste here and I thought I'd um, better use it up. So it's a big jar, not my favourite modelling paste, but still in all, I'm just using the modelling paste and I'm just randomly picking up stencils. So when I do stencil, I do have a bucket of water in the craft room. So when I'm finished with a stencil, I can actually just drop it into the bucket. So this way, this modelling paste won't dry on the stencil and be unusable. 
So when I'm finished stenciling, then I'll actually go to the laundry and then just clean off all my stencils. But once again, I'm getting messy. So I'm really having a good time. Once again, the modelling paste has dried in no time in this 33 degree heat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some splatter. So this is my splatter box and it's an old shoe box that I use just so I don't splatter everywhere that I shouldn't be. Now I'm going to use some metallic paint and I use one part paint, one part water and to splatter I'm going to use a fan brush. I just find that it's so much easier with a fan brush and it gives a fair bit of splatter on the cards. So I'll splatter all my cards uh, back and front. Now at this stage I did actually think of splattering some black splatters on but after I did it I wasn't really too happy. Once again it's one part paint one part water. You just want it watered down a bit uh, just to be able to uh, for the splatters to splatter I guess. <laughs> Now at the beginning I did say that I was going to add some doodles. I'm not really a doodler but I'm just giving it a go. Now instead of doodling what I decided to do was I've got my Posca pens here and I'm letting the paint come out and I'm just causing the paint to drip. So this is called drippage. So just doing some doodling and then I'll call this doodling done. So now you can see that I've done the front and the back. So I've painted with a brayer, I've stamped randomly and I've also used modelling paste through various stencils. So all that I need to do now is to put my prompts on these cards. Now I am using most of the prompts that are in my Take 5 bucket and I've printed them out just on photocopy paper. So I'll cut these up and then I will paste them onto the cards. So to glue these prompts down I'm just going to use some Rangers multimedia mat and uh, just a paintbrush to apply this. So I'm just going to put these down on an angle because these prompts are too wide so they're bigger than a two and a half centimetre. So I'm just going to angle them on each of the cards and I've got enough prompts here to do front and back. So how I've come up with my prompts is I've had a look at my stash. So I've gone around, have a look to see what I've got that I can use. So things like add tissue paper, napkins, colours, um, I've even put down embossing powder, even dyes, um, adding paint using a palette knife, using the colour orange, add a tag, use gelatos. So all of these things are in my stash. So when I pull, pull out a prompt, I know that I've got it. So if you are doing something similar to this, I would just list down all the items that you've got in your stash and use them as prompts. So 
Suckwood's Derivan Polymer Gloss Varnish that I picked up and it's a binder medium as well and it's water based. So what I've done is I've gotten a little bowl here and I've mixed one part uh, varnish and one part water. Now I'm just going to use a paintbrush and I'm going to paint this on. Now I did realise when I first painted the varnish on with uh, where the Posca pens were, it did run a bit, so um, it did react a bit. So, but that's okay um, because you know what? It's not perfect, so that's what I'm looking for. So I'll do the front and the back of all these cards. And once again, it won't take long for these things to dry. With the polymer glaze it has made like a bit of a seal so I'm just going to go around the outside of each of my prompts just with a black texture. I did start using my pit brush by Faber Castell but it's too thick so I needed a bit of a thinner one and I'm just applying it down and then I'm just using my finger just to rub it off a bit. I've got my baby wipe here so if there is too much a pen I can easily wipe the excess off. So they're my prompt cards finished for today. I have had so much fun getting messy today and I do believe that this has helped me heaps. I have made 35 ATC sized cards measuring two and a half by three and a half inches and I have put a prompt on front and back. This gives me 70 prompts all up in total. So now I've got my take five bucket and I also have my prompt cards as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this process video. If you have, please give me your thumbs up. I'd also love to hear your comments on how you create without overthinking and keep that perfectionism in check. Please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear um, how you overcome this. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And until next time, happy crafting. See ya!